Now that we have completed our edit in Adobe Premiere Pro CC and exported our XML file, we are ready to do our final color grading in DaVinci Resolve 9. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is import that XML file into DaVinci Resolve 9. And to do that, I'm on the conform page. And all I need to do is go up into file and then import XML. And then I'm just going to navigate to and select the XML that I exported from Premiere Pro and open that. And when I open this, it's going to give me the option to import a timeline. So just make sure you're importing the correct timeline for your project. And then it also has these two check boxes marked. And I actually want to turn off this automatically import source clips in a media pool because those source clips are my proxy files. And I want to be relinking my media back to my original cinema DNG files and not to the proxies. So I'm just going to deselect that. And then down here at set timeline resolution two, I want to change this back to my original source media size. And that was 1920 by 1080. And with those two changes made, now I'm ready to say OK. And that is going to import the XML into DaVinci Resolve. And you can see here that it's come in with all of my edit decisions down here at the bottom, all the cuts that I made in Adobe Premiere Pro from that multicam edit. And once this timeline has been imported, I can go into my color page. And this is where I can do my final color correction for my project. Now for this music video, I already have a series of tutorials that shows you how to create the look. So I'm not gonna go in depth into creating this final look, but I will quickly show you how to color grade this wide shot. So let me just move this out of the way so you can see my node tree here. And what I need to do here in this shot is I need to adjust the color, but I also need to remove this background. And one very easy way to do that without getting into compositing or any matting is simply to put a power window around the singer and then reduce the exposure of this area so it falls off to black. And the reason I can sort of do this cheat in this example is because the background is in fact black. So just by bringing the exposure down to a point where there is no detail on these edges will allow me to quickly get the look that I'm going for in this shot. So to do that, first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a new node and I'm gonna add a corrector node and just drag that into my node tree and I'm then going to add a new power window and I'm gonna use a circular power window, but you could also use the square power window and I'm just going to adjust that for my shot here. And what I wanna do is invert the power window and in the primaries, I'm gonna offset everything here, just bring it down. And then to kind of get these other areas, I'm gonna go to three-way color corrector and just bring down the highlights to get rid of those lights on the side. All right, and that is looking pretty good. So the next thing I need to do is I just need to adjust the color correction of my singer so that I actually have a black background right now. It's a little bit light so that it better matches that fall off. And so to do that, I'm just gonna go into the log color wheels here and I'm gonna bring my shadow down. And I'm also gonna just adjust the color of my shadow. And then I'm gonna go back into my three-way color corrector and sort of just adjust the exposure here and some of the other color to get it a little bit more where I'm going. And as I'm doing this, I can also sort of adjust this fall off so that it's a little bit more subtle with the background. And that's looking pretty good for this example. And so that's kind of a quick and dirty way to remove the background if you have sort of a black background with what you're working on. And so now let's just say that I've gone through and I have color corrected all of my clips and I'm ready to deliver my final project file. So to do that, first I'm going to save my project and then I'm gonna to go to the deliver page. And in the deliver page, what I wanna do this time is export a high resolution final for my music video. And so for this, I'm gonna actually export as QuickTime uncompressed RGB 10-bit. I'm gonna keep my resolution at 1920 by 1080 because that's my original resolution. I don't care about the audio at this point because there's no audio that was brought in with that project file. And now I wanna actually export just a single clip so I don't need 
the individual clips to be exported. For where I'm going to render the job to, I can keep it in the same folder, but I'm going to create a new subfolder that I call final. And I want to deselect use source file name, and I'm going to call this final music video. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want to create a unique file name. Then down here in my output options, I actually want to force sizing to highest quality and force the debayer resolution to the highest quality as well. And once I've done that, I just need to make sure that I have all of my clips selected. And it looks like I do as I have a duration of three minutes, 36 seconds and 11 frames. But again, just to make sure you can right click and do select all. And you can see that I have in fact selected everything that I need to here. And once that's done, I just need to hit add job and dismiss this by saying continue. And then I just need to start my render and DaVinci Resolve will render out my master file that I can then re-import easily back into Adobe Premiere Pro CC to relink with my audio file and add any additional adjustments that I need to do before I export my final version of the video for the web. So once my final video has finished exporting from DaVinci Resolve 9, I can go back into Adobe Premiere Pro CC and relink that video file with the audio track and also do a few final adjustments before I export the compressed version for the web. First thing I'm gonna do is import my new final video file. And I'm just gonna do that by navigating to it and saying open to import it into my browser. And now if you remember the current timeline I have, which is the music video multicam timeline is only 640 by 360 because it was created off of those proxies. So if I were to simply drop this final music video file into that timeline, the resolution wouldn't match. So I'm not gonna do that. Instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on this file and do new sequence from clip to create a sequence that matches the clip settings. And then I'm just gonna change this so we can see the entire video clip at once. And now I just need to bring my audio file over to this sequence. And doing that is as easy as copying and pasting the audio file. And once I've done that, the audio and video will match. And now I also want to add a cross dissolve at the beginning and end of my music video. And I could have done this in DaVinci Resolve 9, but a lot of times when I'm finishing up a project, I like to do the final tweaks in Premiere Pro just because that gives me a little bit more control over what I'm doing. So I'm just gonna go into Effects and Video Transitions, Dissolve, and I'm just gonna do a Cross Dissolve. So it'll fade in. And I'm gonna go to the end here and drop a Cross Dissolve on that. A little bit of a fade out. And now I'm ready to export this for the web. So the first thing I'm going to do is just set an in and out point. And I usually give myself a few frames of black before and after the transition, just so it has a little bit of space. Uh, so it goes all the way to black and doesn't sort of hang on a fade out. And hit the O key for out. And that's going to select the area that I'm going to export. And then I'm just going to go up to File, Export, and I'm going to Export Media. And this is going to bring up my Export Settings dialog box. And here I'm going to set my export settings. So if I click on the output name, I can set where the final file is going to go. And so I just want to navigate to my folder. And then for my video settings, what I can do is go to a preset and Adobe Premiere has a bunch of different presets that I can choose from. And for this, I'm going to do an export based off of YouTube HD 1080p 23976. But I do need to adjust this a little bit because I'm actually using straight 24 frames per second. So I'm just going to change the frame rate here and everything else can stay the same. I'm also going to tick this render at maximum depth box. And I'm gonna change from variable bitrate to pass to constant bitrate and up the target bitrate 
to 15. And while the variable bit rate will kind of give you more dynamic and better compression, sort of a space savings. So I'm gonna end up with a larger file size doing it this way, but I know that the target bit rate will sort of remain at 15. And that is all looking pretty good. I check my audio settings here and everything looks good here. I can either hit Q to send it to the Adobe Media Encoder, or I can hit export just to export the file as is right now. And so I'm just gonna hit export. And when that's finished exporting, I'll be ready to upload my final file. So hopefully this tutorial has been helpful for you. A lot of the material that I covered in this series of tutorials I have previously touched on in other tutorials. However, I think that there is quite a bit of value in seeing the entire workflow from start to finish in terms of working with Cinema DNG, creating the proxies, bringing those proxies into Adobe Premiere Pro CC, and then creating your edit using multicam and then sending that multi-clip edit decision list back to DaVinci Resolve to do your final color correction, and then being able to go back into Adobe Premiere Pro to finish your edit. Now, obviously there's quite a few variations that you can do on this workflow, depending on what you're trying to do and if you need to go back into certain programs, but hopefully this will give you a sense of how you can work with Cinema DNG, Multicam, and proxies to give yourself some more flexibility when it comes to editing the high data rate and still maintaining your original source material quality. So as always, thank you so much for watching and I hope that this has been helpful for you.